Okay, we now have Andrew Scottsko, who's going to be talking to us about moreaka.net. Yeah, all right, thank you guys. Uh, so, as you've probably heard about, no doubt, at this conference, Akka has just launched 1.0 last Thursday. Uh, Aaron and I did a full day boot camp on Sunday, which a lot of people came to, which was really awesome, so thank you all. One of the really big questions that we've been getting since that boot camp was how do I do a distributed transaction, right? I have this huge clustered application that can scale out across many different machines. How do I do a transaction? So, that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. So, I only have a few minutes, so we're not going to really get into the code, but what I am going to show you is the high-level model for how you do a distributed transaction. This is not going to be like Leslie Lamport white paper status, but uh, you're going you're to see the model here. So the critical thing about a transaction, let's just be clear about what it is. It is a single atomic unit of work that either succeeds or fails as a unit, right? And you're going to know whether it succeeds or fails. So the question is, how do you use that in a distributed system? Uh, many people think you do this only for like a financial transaction, like an order, but actually you could do this for many things where you just don't want duplicates, right? Whether you're doing a resource intensive process like uh, crawling a lot of things or huge batch jobs, really anywhere you want to ensure that you just have one of one version of this, uh, this job running. So let's get into it. How does it go? So here we have a, a network of nodes. Let's assume all of these are on different machines, possibly physically separated across data centers, and they're all going to be working together as a cluster. So a distributed transaction really works as a two-phase commit. And the first part, the first phase, is the one that really matters. And that's really just asking around the cluster, can I do this transaction? The second part is the transaction itself, and it's going to be very specific to your use case, so we're not really going to focus on that. Uh, so how does this begin? We do First, we have the, the transaction starts. So oops, T -star, there it is. T-star comes in. So A is now the coordinator node for this cluster of machines that are working together. Uh, then what he's going to do is he's going to send out, first he's going to internally get a list of his peers and so he knows who else he's dealing with and collaborating with across the cluster. Then he's going to send out uh, an, acknowledge an acknowledgement message saying, I would like to start this job. And then at a high level, they're all going to come back. And so this is what the flow looks like in a successful case. So the coordinator gets the message start. He checks himself. It's just easier to write it that way. We can show you the code later after, after this lightning talk. So he sends himself a start message. He's also sent it to B, C, and D. They all check themselves and they say, am I doing that task that you sent me? That job, am I doing it right now? If the answer is no, they send back X and A carries on and does his job and he's going to go ahead and actually do the commit. So in the case where it's not going to work, same, same flow is going to happen. You're going to have these messages go out sending the transaction start or the attempt to start the transaction. C is going to say, oh no, I actually am already doing that one, so you can't do it. So a NAC will come back and A will fail the transaction and return that to you. Um, or he might, might also have a timeout, in which case it comes back exactly the same way. So here's the crazy part. You actually only need to write two actors to do this. Across a, machine, uh, across a cluster of machines that can scale up or down as big as you need or as small as you need. So you could have this across 100 virtual machines across the world if you had to, but your code is actually only two actors to do it. And they live, the coordinator is the important one, and he lives in two states. He's either ready for work or he's working. So let's go through what it actually looks like in your code uh, when, this goes, when this whole process begins. So the start message comes into the coordinator. He's now in a he's in ready state. He's going to flip into a working state. Then this DTT, DTC broadcaster is essentially an endpoint local to the machine. So if I'm on node A, this is node A's local endpoint that actually remotely lets him talk to all of his peers. Right? So he doesn't have to know where they are, he just knows about his local handle to them, which is this broadcaster. So he's going to send his message to the broadcaster and say, hey broadcaster, who are my peers? Broadcaster is going to send them back, so now he knows who his peers are, how many there are, and what addresses they're at. So when he gets responses back, he can say, where did this message come from? So you can imagine if maybe another node joined the cluster during the process of this transaction and try to join in, he can ignore that. Okay, so uh, now the coordinator knows who the peers are, so then he's going to request, he's going to send out the start message. The start message is basically saying, hey, can I go or not? And so that message is going to go to, to his local broadcaster and then out across the cluster to all of his peers who are going to go through the same flow internally. Um, and then this is what that looks like. So inside your, okay, 
inside your actor, let me speed it up a little bit. Uh, so the, the request for the act comes in, he's gonna say, am I running that job? If the answer is no, he says, go ahead, you're good to proceed. If he is running that job, he's gonna say, no, don't go ahead, I am running that job already, and then the transaction as a whole will fail, and then you can do a retry if that's what your logic uh, needs. Okay. Well, that's basically it. So talk to me more for, for things like that. Uh, last thing is that uh, as a special fringe special, we do a lot of training. Uh, and we have a one-day special. Go to uh, getreactive.net. A little 25% special on everything we offer just for you guys. So thank you. Nice. All right.